Hey, Michelle. Yes. Would you like to introduce us to anybody? Well, um, this is our new friend, Desi. And Desi came to us from a humane society here in the Knoxville area. And, um, oh man, I'm gonna cry. We got him because Lucy really needed a playmate. And because it was our big adventure on the road and if you're gonna get a kitten, might as well get a kitten who knows how to live in the RV from the beginning. And he is real. He is um, real. Hey, Desi. He's mid-cat nap. Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle. And I'm Brian. We are cruising with the Coleman's. So yes, you just met our new addition to the family, Desi. Desi, to go with Lucy, of course. Of course, Lucy and Desi are gonna be living in our long, long trailer all summer long. So it's kind of a, an interesting like moment that this happened. We had, ne we obviously, you're never replacing an animal but we never thought we would get another animal right away because part of our long-term plan was that we were gonna go down to one animal as we continue to travel abroad more. It really is the best time to pick up a new animal because this way with the kitten, he's going to learn the ins and outs of traveling, travel days, living in the RV, and uh, being in that smaller space from his start. So because he'll never know anything else, it's really the best time to acclimate him to living in the trailer versus yeah. picking him up in the, you know, getting an animal during the winter months when we're only in the RV very rarely and for shorter periods of time, not nearly as ideal. Before we tell you about Desi, first let me say we have the time to commit to having a new animal and anytime you get a new animal, you should make sure you have the time to commit. But the best way to honor Pepe is to have another animal for Lucy because Lucy and Pepe were the best of buds and she was certainly traumatized by what happened. And so we feel like the best way to honor his memory is to bring another adventure cat into our life. So we were, uh, our first stop on our big trip was in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, actually just north of Knoxville, Tennessee at Lewiston Point Campground. And I kind of thought, well, Let's take this long shot of, will someone even let us have an animal when I say we're RVers and we live in a 30 foot trailer and we're only here for a couple of days. I thought, well, if all of that happens, it's meant to be. And so I looked at two humane, humane societies uh, because we do believe that in, in getting an animal from a shelter. We looked at two humane societies. The first one, they didn't have anything that, like the website just didn't work for me. So I was like, if it's not working for me, it's not meant to be. The second one, there was this cute little kitten on his hind legs playing with a spring in the picture. And I thought, oh my gosh, he's ours. Like we have to, I have to try. So there was an online application. Again, I thought if they don't think I'm super crazy, then we'll try this out. And so I sent in the application and I got a reply back, a very sweet reply back. This is, we're five hours away from Dayton, Ohio, where you live. And so I don't, you know, I don't know. And I thought, I replied back and said, we're RVers and we're out. And then she said, well, we have somebody who's coming to look at him. And um, so if he doesn't show, if they don't show, I'll let you know. I thought, okay, fine. It wasn't meant to be. I'm not gonna force it to happen. We had to run into town to get a couple of things, get gas and get a couple of groceries and get lunch. And I get this email that said they didn't show. And my sister was coming over to the campsite to visit and her family. We had two hours. I looked at the GPS and it was like a 30 minute drive. And then it was, um, it was a 30 minute drive back. I thought, okay, that's an hour of driving and only an hour. Brian, can we do it? <laughs> so we made a trip out to the Union County Humane Society in Tennessee. Yes. And uh, their link is down below. If you'd like to make a donation to them or go onto their Amazon wish list and send them something, they would appreciate uh, anything that they can get because they are doing a great job there. They had a lot of animals, they did. Uh, cats, dogs, they had a donkey, they had parrots, they had all sorts of things there. They had, okay, so we have this joke. We have, we said, by the time we get to Key West, we're telling the woman there, we've got this joke, by the time we get to Key West, if we, um, if, if a Hemingway cat happens to walk up to our site at the campground or in town, 
and it's one of those extra toe polydactyl cats. They, if there's one in Key West and it's meant to happen, if not, we're meant to be with one animal and that's okay too. So I'm telling the woman the story and she says, hold on. And out she rolls an office chair and we meet the lobby cat. I don't remember his name. I don't remember his name either, but he had the extra toe. The cutest uh, he thing. He was not from the Keys, but we kind of took that maybe as a little bit of a sign. Uh, in part, this video is about merging our family because obviously we're not trying to traumatize Lucy any further than what she's already been traumatized. And so if this is a, a plan. We have time in our trip right now to give these two animals their space, um, to be able to smell each other's spaces out, to be able to um, have their own space, and for us to give them each their own attention. Well, and to be able to properly isolate them so that they can be introduced uh, at a time that's gonna work and give them the attention that they need. Yeah. This is not the time when we're gonna be out and about for hours and hours and hours on end. Day and, after day. Right, you know, if we were in a more, if like we were in Key West, for example, that's a spot where we're gonna really be go, go, going and not gonna be spending a lot of time in the RV. So that's not the ideal time to pick up a new animal. Right, and we have a couple weeks before we get there. And obviously the, getting a kitten has changed our trip a little bit, which fortunately we plan all of our destinations, but we don't plan what we're gonna do. And so we're taking a slower approach to this trip because um, Desi is an attention hog. He loves all the attention. Um, yeah, I have to check Michelle every morning for hickeys because Desi likes to sleep right here. It's, on it's awkwardly strange, but he's adorable, so I'm gonna let him go. And uh, at this point, we've had Desi now for four, five days? Six days, actually. Yeah, six days. So uh, they're already pretty integrated in, but let's backtrack for a moment and show you how we introduced uh, Lucia and Desi to one another. I want everyone to meet Desi, or at least the belly. Hey, there he is. This is our new addition to the family. If you watched last week's video, you know that we've had a challenging week. Um, our sweet Pepe, who was only seven years old, passed away unexpectedly. So check out last week's video where we introduced the catio and unfortunately have to share that bad news with you. Here we are, we're at the beginning of this trip and we said, all right, we gotta introduce Lucia to Desi, obviously, the pun is intended. And how do you do that safely? Because you can't just throw another animal into your RV and be like, hey, you guys should get along, because they will look at you and say no. And it's actually quite traumatic. And what's gonna happen is the animals in the end are not gonna have as healthy of a relationship as they could have. When we introduced Lucia to Pepe, we had her, we were at home, so we had her in a separate room. Like, this is ideal, right? So she was in a separate room. Pepe wasn't allowed in that room. We actually had a gate up so that they could sniff each other out, but they wouldn't cross the gate. And when um, there were times where Lucia would go out in the main house and Pepe would come into the room and it was all separated. Most of you, I assume, don't have that luxury in an RV. Our RV is only 30 feet there are zero solid doors. Even the door to the bathroom isn't a solid door. Come on up here. And so it's not even a solid door. So there is nowhere to separate. But hey, we built a catio. So what did we bring inside the RV? We brought a catio in. And this has helped tremendously because he has his own space. We can take it outside so Lucia gets all of her own time in here. We can take Lucia outside in this. So in the video we showed you last week that we, it attaches to our outdoor kitchen so that the cats can free roam, but it also separates. And that's what we've got here is just the one piece. It has only been just over 24 hours. They have had small interactions Lucia is still in the hissing, I don't want to be around you phase, so we're not pushing her. We've had him outside a lot. We've kept him in here. We've had her outside. Fortunately, we're in a good campground, so we can do that. But there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, he has to have his own kitten food, and it has to be kept separate from Lucia because it's high calorie, and she does not need any more calories. I mean, none of us really do, except 
kittens, but he has to have separate food. So we keep that in a separate spot. <laughs> he also has to have a separate litter box. Now we're trying to introduce each other it introduced him to the other litter box. And he has used it. And he has used it. Um, I don't think Lucia is completely happy about it, but she's managing, which is great. She's still eating, playing, all the things. That's what Those are some of the signs you're looking for. She's still eating, playing. Is she willing to take treats? All good things. And she sniffed out his litter box more than once. Yes. So what we've done is we sent her into this area and let him have roam of the RV and he stays in here most of the time. Obviously, we let him out for, for a little while. This afternoon, we took a little bit of time to just let them both roam in the RV. It was a success. Lucia is still not in the mood. But there are just some things that you need to kind of be thinking about here. And that's the separate, separate situation, uh, separate spaces. And what I beg you to do is not push them. Uh, don't make them, you know, work on your time frame. Transitioning your animal involves making sure they have their own food and water space, making sure they have their own litter box, having their own enclosure of some kind. If you don't have a catio, don't just put them in a tiny little kennel. You're going to have to uh, find a bigger, like maybe find an outdoor animal um, uh, enclosure that has a lid on it and it may be uncomfortable in your rv or even a larger dog kennel right find something because and, and then when you're done with it donate it to a local animal shelter they will greatly appreciate it uh, make sure you have the, the a separate enclosure make sure you have the time now if you want your cat to be an adventure cat and you're watching this maybe because you're thinking you guys take lucia and pepe out on adventures all the time you're right we do so pepe was not quite as fond of it he would only go out once in a while and we never pushed him to go out beyond his limits um, and he liked a harness that was like a vest so it helped create a security blanket lucia has been wearing a harness since she was desi's age Desi is just over two months old. So, and actually I think she was even a little bit smaller than that, but she's been wearing a harness and leash walking for that long. She's also been in an RV since she was about three and a half months old. So she's very used to the experience, which is why we knew it was so important for us to get a cat early on, a kitten early on in this experience, it was ideal. So we even put, Desi in a harness today. Safely, he was just on our bed. We attached a leash to it just so that he got the sense of it. We didn't try to get him to walk at all. And here's how that looks. This is his first time in a harness. And if you've never seen a cat get into a harness for the first time, it's usually really hysterical. This won't be bad because he's you're supposed to get him in as young as possible so that they, it's just something that they've always known. And he is a boy, but a pink one is what we have, and we're not gender-specific people here. You want it tight. This is still isn't quite tight enough. I know. Um, it was as loose as it could be, because it was actually Lucia's. And so we're reusing it. And now I think we've got a pretty good, for just a couple of minutes outside, we've got a pretty good grip. Lucia's outside in the catio. They've had some introductions. They've laid right next to each other. Ish is she's still hissing at him and we're keeping them separated as much as possible um, and giving them each their own space. Fortunately, we are able to give them their own space because we have, oh no, oh no. There oh, he goes. There he goes. Okay, all right, all right, there we go. That's why we do it inside. That's why we do it inside. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so it, it's not quite as easy as I was hoping. Hold on, I gotta clip it again. Let's see, I always is the harness a breakaway? No, and so the harness should never be on him unless we are with him. This is super important um, because you don't want a cat to hurt themselves, and you don't want it, this to be a bad experience. And he does whatever. And this is usually what happens when a cat gets in a harness for the first time. They kind of freak out a little bit because they're not used to this. And that's why we're doing restraint. it inside too, because. You just, you just don't, <laughs> you just don't want it to be a bad experience. There we go. Yeah, I know. Walking on a leash is hard. 
<laughs> and never just drag them. So like I did it just a little bit to see if he'd stand up, but you don't want to just drag them because then they, that's what they think is part of the process. So you're leading him. I'm leading with the him. Leash. But I'm, when he stops, I just stop. And that's how we walk Lucia still. When she stops, we stop. Just walking over. a cat is not like walking a dog. No, you're not going. I mean, there are cats that go for hikes. But for cats, it's about just being outside and exploring safely. Um, there are cats, their favorite place always. I'm going to tighten this just a little bit. Their favorite place to explore is around um, bushes, uh, tree lines. They love a good tree line. You want it to be a positive experience, so always do it inside first. I know, you want to go down. Well, you can go down and there's only another room. All right, Brian, we're going to move to a different room. Okay. I know, it's still attached. There you go. It's your choice. <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> we have blankets everywhere. We're trying to get the smell of um, everyone on this blanket because that's the blanket that's going to go in his kennel when we travel. Last night, he slept the entire night on the t-shirt that I was wearing yesterday. Which he slept, uh, we had a good quiet seven hours. So, which was really nice. I know. Excuse me. Come on, let's go this way. Come on, you can do it. There you go. This leash also has some give to it, which is really nice because it's not just total tug. He's always going to know a camera in his face. So as you can see, it was just a, a small experience and I don't know when we'll get him outside. It may be a week. It may be two weeks. It, it may, may be, be tomorrow. It may be tomorrow. We don't know. Uh, I think that you really have to be a person who's intuitive and can go with your gut when it's something like that. But I beg you, please, if you're going to have any animals, if you're going to take them outside, do it safely. There are so many predators out there. We know we're going to Florida where we're going to have gators and we're going to have snakes, venomous snakes. We also, you have to be aware of the birds overhead. So you have to do this safely and not just for all the predators, but for the health of your animal. You want to make sure it's a positive experience. When I get the harness out, Lucia goes running to the door. She loves going out for a walk. And if we don't do this carefully, he won't love it. And we want to make sure it's a positive experience for both of them being living in a small space and going for walks. The most interesting part of the story will come later. And that is when this guy is five months old and we're back home and he gets to experience our home base. I don't know if he's going to know what to do with all that space. Wait a minute. That's not Desi. That's Lucy. Hi, Luz. An important part of the transition process is exactly this. It's putting taking Desi out and putting Lucia in here. So now Desi has free roam. She can safely look at him. And the cool part is it's from a higher level. So Desi's way down on the ground and she's going to be able to look down on him. But the other thing is we have a t-shirt in here. So this is a t-shirt that Brian has sacrificed. He was wearing this shirt yesterday when we picked up Desi. It has probably a little bit of the smells of the Humane Society in it. Definitely has Brian smells on it. We put it in the shirt and first of all, Desi was in love. He started cuddling, he was whiny a little bit and Brian put that shirt in there and he calmed right down. He snuggled up and he actually just immediately went to sleep. I say he slept on that shirt almost the entire night without moving. Yeah. And so now this has his smell all over it. And so as he explores, she gets all the smells from just the tower itself, but specifically from this shirt. And so we hope, as with any good owner, you hope that that's just getting them one step closer to being able to be connected. And as you can see, she's smelling it. A second ago, she was kneading on it, which is a very good sign. Um, she was. She did not hiss at the t-shirt. She did not, which is a very good sign. It's funny because when uh, we did this transition with Pepe, he hissed like at her and she just looked at him like, wait a minute, what? And she, Desi's doing the same thing. He's looking at her like, wait a minute, what? So they don't know exactly why they do some of the things that they do, but they do this. 
The other thing is we had them on the bed earlier. She was under the covers and we were able to put Desi on the bed and she was able to poke her head out and he was able to get a little close and we'll show you a little clip of that. We're only on day two with sweet Desi and he's been in his harness. We, we practiced the harness just without the leash. He's been in it for a while. And um, it's time to just set him on the ground. I'm not gonna try to walk or do anything, but just see how he feels. He's been just taking a good nap right now, so he's got probably lots of energy. You ready to get down, Desi? Let's say hi to your adoring fans. And this is about what happens. steps. Again, walking a cat is not like walking a dog. And we've got jet skis. Cars. Oh yeah, no. Fortunately, this is going to be used to all the sounds of the campground. There we go. Cats like to think that they're the ones doing all the work. Little do they know. Not going too far. Hey, RV Sticker Club shout out. Yeah. And a little tug. See how we do. Oh, we're doing okay. Don't flop over. Oh, we're still walking. Yay! Well, there you have it. You've met Lucy and Desi. We'll be working on uh, keeping them entertained and keeping them active. So I'm sure you'll see pictures of them on Instagram and Facebook if you follow us there. Otherwise, make sure you hit like on this video, give us a comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't done that to see more of our adventures and of course more adventures of Lucy and Desi on their grand road trip from Key West to Acadia. We have just a little bit of time left on our uh, two giveaways that we have going on. We have the one giveaway, as we go towards a thousand subscribers so make sure you uh, share this video on facebook uh, as hashtag, a public share hashtag take an adventure with us and you'll be entered uh, a bonus entry into our uh, into that giveaway if you're not already one of our subscribers hit subscribe and we're giving away those catio welcome to the catio sign which has got about one week left on that giveaway so check that video out and uh, that's the uh, how to build a catio video that's linked up above Check that out, leave a comment there, and you'll be entered in that giveaway contest. And I just want to say one more time, please make sure if you have animals that you keep them on a leash and you always spay and neuter Absolutely. your pets. Bob Barf reminding you, help control the pet population. Have your pet spayed or neutered. Goodbye, everybody. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks for taking Thanks this adventure. adventure with us. Yeah. And uh, keep following along to see what happens next.